my experience is this in uh, in my experience 30 years in the financial markets it takes a long time for the markets to learn the true characteristics of an asset Bitcoin's only 13 years old most money managers do not understand the most beautiful characteristics of Bitcoin which I as a credit manager view that Bitcoin is actually a short credit position meaning when you own Bitcoin, you have a short position on sovereign debt. And I love that. Uh, to be clear, I own Bitcoin and I own gold and I own silver and I own other hard assets. Uh, so everything I do is probabilities based. Everything I do is ma based on mathematics. Um, and that's what's great about credit because credit is all math, okay? Equities, you can call it math, but there's a lot of subjectivity to equities because, you know, oh, I see a company growing at this rate. Fixed income is exactly that. There's no growth in fixed income. It's a fixed contract. So credit is pure math. And that's why I am very comfortable with credit as an engineer. Engineers are typically good at math. But here's how I get there. Very simply, look, the total global financial assets in the world are 900 trillion US dollars in today's dollars. Okay, 900 trillion US dollars. That includes all global debt, not just government debt, global debt, bank debt, provincial debt, state debt, muni debt, structured debt. That's about 400 trillion. It includes all global equities. It includes all global currencies. It includes gold, which is 10 trillion for a total. Oh, and it includes all global real estate for a total value of $900 trillion. That's what I term as my total addressable market. Because Bitcoin is a financial asset that, in my opinion, is going to eat the lunch of a lot of these other financial assets, in particular, bonds. I've spent 30 years in bonds, and I can tell you with no degree of uncertainty, they are absolutely the worst investment you can possibly make for your money. And that's $400 trillion of this 900 trillion pie. Anyway, stick with me. 900 yeah. trillion dollars. I believe that Bitcoin someday will become the reserve asset, global reserve asset. And when that happens, and it'll probably happen because a country like Russia wants to get paid for its oil in Bitcoin rather than in US dollars. Why? Well, Bitcoin is monetary energy. It requires proof of work. And natural resource energy for monetary energy makes a whole lot more sense in my mind than, than natural resource energy for worthless and debasing fiat dollars. As an engineer, I like the conservation of energy principle. I know Michael Saylor's a big fan of that too. So if that happens, is it crazy to think, again, if Bitcoin becomes the global reserve asset, is it crazy to think that Bitcoin gets 5% share of $900 trillion. Don't forget, right now, the global reserve asset is treasury bonds, US treasuries. If Bitcoin gets 5% of $900 trillion, that's $45 trillion. What's 45 trillion divided by 21 million fixed supply of Bitcoin? That's $2 million per Bitcoin. That's with a 5% market share in today's dollars what if it gets 20 percent market share that's how you get extremely large numbers so this is all i am saying i'll start with a five percent target it's not a limit it's a target and five percent of 900 trillion is 45 trillion 45 trillion divided by 21 million is 2 million us dollars per bitcoin in today's dollars Put a probability on that. I say I do a probability distribution or I can do a binary distribution. I don't want to lose your viewers too much, but let's do a very simple binary distribution. What if there's a 10% chance Bitcoin attains my price target in today's dollars and a 90% chance it goes to zero? Hmm. The expected value of that binary distribution, meaning only one of two outcomes, is $200,000 Per Bitcoin. Well, it's trading at 40,000 that to make the math easy, one fifth of where that probability distribution says it should trade. Now you can actually 
change the distribution as you like. What if you say, okay, it's a 50% chance it goes to zero, a 50% chance it goes to 2 million. Well, then all of a sudden that expected value is a million dollars of Bitcoin in today's dollars. So then you know, all I'm saying is you got to look at these, it's like going to the horse track and you've watched a horse train and you think this horse is one of the top horses in the race, but the racetrack is giving you 100 to one odds that it'll win. And you're like, man, I think the odds of this guy winning is at least one in 10. You're supposed to put bets on that guy because the track is giving you odds that are in your favor. And it's the same with Bitcoin. It currently is trading in the markets at 150th, or sorry, it's tr currently trading in the market at a probability of it getting to $2 million of only 150th, right? A 2% chance. That's, I'm taking those odds because I think the chances are it gets there. I'm not going to say over 50%, but certainly over 30%. I think if you look at it as digital property, it's pretty clear there are billions and billions of people that would rather own digital property than physical property. And I think that uh, the most forward thinking use case is Bitcoin is digital energy. If you go on Twitter, you find like uh, in one hour, 500 Michael Saylor bots. They all get spun up. Uh, if you go on YouTube, uh, there are about 500 to 1000 Michael Saylor Bitcoin giveaway scams every week. We take them down every 15 minutes. Uh, the world, uh, the so cyberspace is, is beset by scammers, fishers, uh, denial of service attacks, spammers, and it's never been worse. It's literally awful. And uh, the reason it's awful is because no one's got any skin in the game. Or another way to say it is, there's no conservation of energy in cyberspace. I can go into a hotel in the real world, post a credit card, smash up the hotel, and they charge me money. But what if I could go into every single hotel on earth and every hotel room and every hotel on earth using a Python script and smash them all up and not charge, not get charged any money, right? The entire world would come to a grinding halt. And so that's the, that's the status quo on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Office 365 right now. And it, you're watching the front page of the paper. If you look at the Wall Street Journal today, Massive amount of cyber attacks being launched on Ukraine right now. They're all denial of service attacks. Denial of service attacks is like when someone hits your website with 15 million requests in an hour. They can do that because it doesn't cost them a dollar a request or $10. So if you want to solve the problem of, of cybersecurity and make cyberspace safe for children, and if you want to eliminate hostile cyber attacks, and if you want to clean up Twitter and YouTube and stop con men and phishing and scamming, the simple solution is let let someone uh, get an orange check mark next to their name if they post ten dollars worth of satoshis, and you would have a billion orange checks. And now you lock down all websites and all inboxes and all comments to people with the orange check. And of course, you would only have to post ten dollars once in your life which is fine because you're not going to denial of service attack someone. But if if I'm a hostile bot, like these people that actually impersonate me on YouTube, they have 40,000 live bot listeners. They would have to post $400,000 in Bitcoin every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes because they refresh every 10 minutes, Mackenzie. If you did that, it would cost you $40 million a day to launch that attack instead of nothing.